So, lots and lots of things to talk about today. There was a trailer released last night detailing lots of different things about the multiplayer of Battlefield Hardline, and there are so many little bits of details in there that you might not have noticed. So I'm going to go through some of those now, and hopefully it will give you some information about what you can expect in the upcoming beta. Just before we begin, however, the beta has been confirmed now as a release date of February the 3rd, which is Monday in about three days' time, and it will run through to February the 8th. But anyway, without further ado, let's jump into this action. Now, the trailer itself was about five minutes long, so I have watched all the way through it about 10 or 15 times now, and the first thing I could pick out is this right here. Now, it might be something that you're already aware of, but I think it's worth reiterating it. The Riot Shield in Battlefield Hardline is carried on the player at all times. This means it doesn't just materialise out of nowhere and you start using as a forward-facing Riot Shield, it works as a rear-facing Riot Shield as well. That means when it's on the player's back and you shoot at it, you're not going to do any damage to that part of the body. You can, of course, shoot the legs because they're below the Riot Shield, but it gives a lot of cover if you're running away from enemy fire. You can just turn your back with the Riot Shield on and you won't take as much damage as you think you might do. Next up is the Reflex Sight, which is traditionally a red dot sight, but in Battlefield Hardline, as you can see in front of you, that red dot has been replaced by a yellow triangle. Now, aiming with this could be a little bit confusing, but I have information from Thad Sasa that you have to aim the top point of the triangle at the point you want the bullet to go. So if you want a headshot, you need to put the top point of the triangle in the middle of the person's head, and then that's where the bullets will go. It's not the middle of the triangle you need to use, it's the top point of the triangle. Hopefully that makes things clear. Another couple of things that you might not have noticed, this first screenshot here shows one of the player models completely different to the other two player models. Two of them are police officers and one of them is a criminal. This is taken from the new Crosshair game mode. In the Crosshair game mode, if you are the VIP, you will be on the police force's side, but you will be dressed up as a criminal, and you will only be armed with a gold desert eagle. And in this next screen, you can see the criminals who are fighting the police officers in the Crosshair game mode, but you'll notice they're all in red clothing. This is one of the variants of outfits that you will be able to equip onto your player whilst you're playing any of the game modes within Battlefield Hardline. It was again confirmed by Thad on Twitter that there will be four different variants of clothing available for the law enforcement and the criminals. Next up, golden melee weapons. You can see right here that the criminal is using a golden crowbar to take down this police officer. And it's also worth noting that this is one of the non-lethal takedowns within Battlefield Hardline. Of course, you're not just having access to crowbars and sledgehammers, you will also have access to the normal array of knives that you would expect in a Battlefield game nowadays. So there are different ways that you can choose to take down your enemy. You can only equip a knife or a non-lethal melee weapon though, but there's loads of different types of things for you to choose from. Of course, we've seen the baseball bat before. Here we can see the crowbar. There's a sledgehammer that you can see in this second screenshot here. This guy's going through the lethal takedown method for using the sledgehammer. You can just see he's going to absolutely obliterate him with it. But yes, as I said, there are multiple different things you can choose for your melee weapon. And what is really nice to see is that in the recent gameplay drop that they did on the Battlefield website, they released about three or four minutes of footage on different maps. You could see that different melee weapons had completely different animations, which is a really nice touch. Next, we have the tracer gun. And here is how it works. Whatever you try to shoot ends up turning a nice red colour on your first person view and makes it fully visible on the minimap as well. Now this is kind of reminiscent of the Battlefield 4 kill cam, which I'm not overly keen on. I think it's a really rubbish way of showing things off, but in this case I think it works very well. It's got a nice visible clear marker in first person. If you remember back in Bad Company 2, it was a small light on the side of the vehicle, or the dart itself would light up and glow and pulse red, which wasn't always 100% identifiable. It did mean that you were, that was visible on the minimap all the time, but in first person view it wasn't quite as visible. 
I like this system in Hardline, however, I could see a small amount of criticism from the fact that it never disappears off the HUD. Even if it's like 300 meters away, it's still visible on the HUD. So maybe a little bit of scaling there when it's actually in your vicinity and you have the option to take it out may be the right way to go there. When playing the rescue mode, if you are the player who manages to have the hostage on their back and you're trying to get them to the extraction point, they are going to be visible on your back, which makes it easily identifiable to the enemy team as to whether you're the carrier or not. That kind of makes sense, considering you are actually going to have to carry the hostage in real life out to the extraction point, but it's nice to know that that has been included in the game. And check out this as a nice final point to close the video on. These are exotic sports boats and they look to be included in Hardline themselves. I can't be confident of the game mode, but looking at the vehicles that are on offer in these screenshots, I'm going to hazard a guess at either Conquest or Hotwire. And I think that's really cool that they've included that kind of small amount of, I wouldn't consider it naval, but water-based combat as well. This map that they're playing on is called Riptide and it's the one that was shown off recently in some of the screenshots on the Battlefield website. Well, this is some of the gameplay from that map. There are a couple of mounted machine guns on the back of each of these boats and there are a couple of shots for individual players to sit in there and use their primary, secondary or like gadgets as well. So it looks like a nice team based vehicle and they haven't just gone for that single transport mode like they have with some of the other vehicles in Hardline. And there you go, you're up to date with everything that you need to know about Battlefield Hardline. A lot of this stuff will be included in the upcoming beta. And just as a side point actually, I will have some exclusive footage going up on Monday next week, which is the day before the beta drops. And it will be some footage of what you can expect from the beta, different game modes, different gadgets and weapons and lots of different things in there for you to have a look at, so you've got a really good idea of what you can expect. But anyway, thank you very much for watching today. If you enjoyed the video, if you could leave me a rating, that would be fantastic. And leave some comments too, let me know what you think about some of these things that you're going to get to play with in Battlefield Hardline. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.